Cupcakes. Welcome to another video. So today we will be starting a new series that is on bioinformatics. After bioinformatics, we will focus on the next part that will be bioprocess technologies. So stay tuned for industrial biotechnology or bioprocess technology after this series. So now, without much further ado, let's get right into the video. So now, in this, the first format is the MBRF or PIR format. Second format is FASTA format. And third is GDE format. Now, sequence format means what? Now, unlike your Word file or your text file, bioinformatics data cannot be saved that way. Why? Because bioinformatic data are usually containing different structures, they have different information, quadrant specific, they are three dimensional. So, therefore, it is difficult to do that with the normal tool. And also, there are a number of places, especially during alignment, etc., where gaps have to be added. And there are certain requirements like the download size should be less if you be able to take a lot of data. Therefore, for all of these reasons, bioinformatics especially makes use of different types of formats and not the usual ones. So the most commonly used formats for sequences are the NDRF or PIR, FASTA, and GD. You must have heard about FASTA quite frequently. So now first let us start discussing about each of them. Now, mind you, there have been questions asked in the DBT paper on these five formats as well. At the end of the series, I will make one video where I'm discussing all the questions from bioinformatics. So in that, you will realize that how the questions come from this. So first one, that is the NDRF or PIR format. The full form of PIR is Protein Information Resource. Okay, so PIR is Protein Information Resource. And these files, like how our PDF files are stored as .PDF, Similarly, these PIR files are stored with an extension of .PIR or .sec, that is .sequence. Okay, now this is an example of how it works. Now, some important things that you have to remember is the NDRF format starts with this symbol, like a greater than symbol, followed by a P1. Now, what does P suggest here? P is protein. For nucleic acid, you can only imagine it could be any. Okay, so looking at this extension, you will know that it's a protein file. This is a nucleic acid file, they will write N1. So starts with a greater than sign followed by P1 or N1, and then a semicolon. Then the name or the accession number of the protein or the nucleic acid molecule. Then the next line is basically the name of the protein or the name of the sequence and the accession number. Then followed by that, you have the entire sequence. So here the different letters, as you know, will represent the different amino acids. The sequence ends with an asterisk mark. So how to identify whether it's the PRI format? Firstly, the extension, it will be either .PR, .PIR or .SEC. Second thing is it will start with a greater than sign and end with an asterisk. It will be PI colon or N1 colon for protein and nucleic acid respectively. Okay, very This is the NDRF format of the PIR. Next is the FASTA form. The extension for FASTA format is dot .FASTA. Okay, again, like the PIR format, this also starts with the greater than symbol. However, you will notice that there is no end symbol as such. Also, there is no PI or NI semicolon. We directly start with the accession number and in the same line, you will have the name and the information about the sequence. Okay, that is the FASTA format. Now, the good part about FASTA format is gaps, etc. can be introduced, can be written down and they are usually represented by a underscore or by a dot. Okay, so this is the FASTA format. Usually used for alignment purposes. Next, we have the GDE format. So, the extension for the GDE format is .GDE, simple. And unlike the other two, it begins with a percentage symbol, followed by the name, accession number, etc. There is no end symbol as such. Okay? 
So this is the GDE format. Hopefully this format is very, very clear. So they might just ask you to identify what kind of format it is by giving you a sequence. Okay. So simple three formats. Now let's go further on and see for aligned sequences what are the formats used. So for aligned sequences, the three formats used are also being carried out. So it's not that these three formats as we discussed are not used. They are also used. However, for gap by alignment, we do something called as gap addition. Now, gap addition is to increase the alignment score, okay, to get a better alignment. So, therefore, gaps are introduced and therefore, these kind of files are more preferred. So, the multiple sequence format, MSF, is one kind of format used for aligned sequences. And then these are two different softwares actually. PHLIC, that is phylogenetic inference package. This is one format which actually saves the file in this particular format itself. So the software specifically has its own format. Similarly, there is a software that is freely available called as Cluster Omega or Cluster X. So these then have their own format, that is the ALM format. They don't make use of the traditional three format. They have their special format that is AL. So de depending upon what kind of software it is, they some softwares would have their own kind of uh, you know extension sequences. The others may have both three that we discussed about. Okay. Now for structural data. For structural data, the go-to is the PDB file. You all must have seen if you go to the PubMed or you go to NCPI. You will find structural data. We have the PDB format which is used. If you all have gone to the uh, PDB website, Swiss, Re Swiss PDB, or you go to NCBI website and you have looked at the protein structure, you will find that the download option available is in the .pdb format only. So for structural data, the go to is the PDB file. Now the PDB file is basically special because it gives the atomic coordinates, which is helpful in describing the secondary structure of the protein. There are different annotations available. Annotations meaning information regarding the protein molecule, like the atom numbers, which amino acids are present at what position. All of those details are given. Then additional comments are given in case of some special part of the protein or some special data it is given experimental details like whether how is this process how is this data determined by x-ray crystallography or nmr and in what paper the reference data is given so these are the structured database hopefully all these file formats and these simple things were understood by you in the next series lecture i will be talking about the different types of databases that's it for me for today. I'll see you in the next video.